Okay, here I have the phone number for a Cisco 7942 phone, but we can actually do this for any phone or any device that we want to connect, whether it's a router or an antenna, as I said. Hello, hello, I hope everyone is doing well. Today I bring you a video that I hope will be quite short, because I'm going to explain a feature that we normally use on a daily basis, in all our networking work, that some students, who are usually starting out in these jobs are in the entire world of networking, and are also studying for their CCNA certification, find a little complicated, and that is PO technology. We usually use this to power an infrastructure device, whether it's a router that's outdoors, which is usually on a tower, or also end devices such as an IP phone. There are different ways in which we can power these devices. PO usually involves powering over the internet. That is, we send the voltage to the devices through the same UTP cable. One of the typical topologies that we can find and that we can normally see in all business networks is the following. A switch that usually has a PO port and this port is connected, for example, to an IP phone and the IP phone also serves as a connection to the computer. Obviously, the computer does not have or is not powered by the switch. The IP phone is powered by the switch. Something that I have to clarify to all the people who are watching this video and who follow me in this YouTube community is that when we have a switch, for example, a Cisco switch, the switch can usually have 24 or 48 ports. We always have to read the manufacturer's specifications in order to power a device, for example, an antenna or an IP phone. Now I'm going to show you the connections that we usually make in order to power these phones or also power an antenna or a router that is perhaps high up on a tower, right? The first one I showed you was the image in which we had a switch. The switch may have a port, it is using a port that is the one that is sending power to the IP phone. This switch provides a data connection to the computer, but the computer is being powered from an independent power connection, right? So it is clear that the switch is only sending power to the IP phone. That is one of the connections. We may find ourselves in the case where we may have a switch but it does not have PO ports, or to configure PO on any of its ports. So, what do we have to use? We need to start using adapters to power these devices or to power the antennas or routers that we have on the towers. So, we need to know how we are going to make these connections. I can tell you right away that it is quite simple. We just have to be very careful with where we are going to connect it and how we are going to connect it. Okay, so we are going to explain how we have to make all these connections when we have a PO adapter in our hand. The first thing we have to do is check the voltage and current that it can have as an output and if it is enough to power the Cisco devices. Usually these devices, some do not, their connection or the voltage that they normally accept is 48V. There are others that accept less voltage, but these devices generally accept 48 volts, including the antennas. Okay, so we must always be clear that the adapter that we are going to use is always capable of sending that voltage to the devices so that they can turn on. Many of the adapters have the identification here, if you can see there which normally indicates which is the data port and which is the POI port. How should we connect this? I'm going to mainly take the phone here, I'm going to explain it to you this way, but you can visualize it from here, because it's not really a connection, it's something quite simple. I'm going to disconnect the headset here, in case it falls. Well, here I have the phone, it's a Cisco 7942 phone, but we can really do this for any phone or for any device that we want to connect, whether it's a router or an antenna, as I said. See that here it has, well, I don't know if you can see it there, but it has a port here that normally tells you that this is where the switch is connected. The first topology that I showed you where we make a direct connection from the switch to the IP phone is a connection that we normally use when the switch has features to send power over the internet or power over the internet or voltage over the internet. But in the event that we do not have equipment that has that functionality, as I already told you, we have to use the adapters. So, we have to know where we have to connect, because this port that is here, which is indicating that here we have to connect the switch, is no longer directly connected to the switch, it is already connected to the adapter. So, what we have to do is simply go, take our cable, the internet cable or the rec cable that we are going to use and connect it to that port, to the port where it is indicated that the switch is connected there because the one here next to it also says the same thing from 10 to 100 megabytes per second, but all it indicates that the PC was connected. 
V, it says PC there, see? So that is where the PC is connected. So we are not going to use that one. We are going to use where the switching is. Okay. Once we have this ready, now what we are going to do is take the adapter and you can see that this adapter indicates which is the PO port and which is the data port. Yes? So, let's take the other end of the cable that we connected to the phone and connect it to the PO port. Here it is, see? Because this port is where the power or voltage is going to be sent to the phone so that the phone can turn on. Okay, so if I take this adapter and connect it to the power supply, it should turn on. Let's connect it. Here I have the adapter and I'm going to connect it here. There, as you can see, it's already turned on. And look how the device is already turning on. And how do we connect this device to the receiver? Because what we've done so far is connect the PO so that it can be powered and can turn on and somehow we can configure it if necessary. What we're going to do is the following. We're going to connect a cable to this data port and the other end of that UTP cable. We're going to connect it to the switch port because we are already powering the IP phone and this data port is where network information or network traffic will be transmitted. These adapters are connected that easily. For those who are new to this and don't know how to do it, you can see it here in a physical way without having to explain it to them through a diagram or through a top-of-the-line technology. You can do it with any device, whether it's an antenna, a router, or an IP phone that requires power through PO or power over internet. What comes next? Simply connect another UTP cable to the PC port and connect the other end to the PC. That way, both the IP phone and the computer will be connected to the network. Many times I have been asked how the computer has a network connection if the computer is not directly connected to the network. Just so you know, on IP phones, these IP phones, usually, these ports that you see here, this is a mini switch that they have here. Yes, what this does is simply switch the signal. Uh, we are connecting to the network through this port and through this port we are going to connect to other devices in this case to a single device, which is a single PC. And in this way, these devices can remain connected to the network and also provide service to the computer that is connected in this case. That was all for today's video. I hope you find it very useful. I hope you understood it and that when you have the opportunity to do this type of work, you can do it in a clearer and more precise way. See you next time. Bye.